Welcome! In this video, I'll show you how to solve problem 8.13 as it appears in the third edition of Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics. This problem states the following. It says, for a spherically symmetrical potential, we can apply the WKB approximation to the radial equation, which we have seen before, in the case where L is equal to zero. So here they state that it is reasonable to use equation that we have seen uh, right here. So basically, um, the one that we saw when we have a single wall, so WKB approximation when we have one vertical wall and one sloping one. And what we saw is that we can basically use this, but of course our limits were not zero to R zero and we were not integrating over R, but it was quite similar. So they say that we can use that, but with some very slight changes. So basically integrating over R and use it in the radial case. And R zero here is the turning point and Indeed, here uh, they treat r equals zero as an infinite wall. So we will apply this formula to estimate the allowed energies of a particle in the logarithmic potential, this one right there, um, with constants v0 and a. And we will, of course, treat only the case l equals zero, which is uh, the one where this uh, expression right there is valid. And we will show that the spacing between the levels is independent of mass, and we will indeed get uh, to this result in the end. So uh, let's begin. So how do we go about it? Well, as usual, we simply have to solve this one integral. That's the whole point of the WKB approximation. All we need to do is set up this integral and solve it. And then, of course, put it equal to n minus one fourth pi h bar. So what is the momentum here? The momentum, as usual, is the square root of 2m e minus the potential. But what is the potential? It is v0 natural log of r over a. And as usual, we need to get rid of this e somehow. Um, and the way to do it is, as we always do, is we say, all right, so the energy we know will be equal to the potential at the turning point, right? We'll have some, some potential that will, I don't know, go something like that. And our energy will be somewhere here. And there will be a point, which is R0, where they will be equal. So for that reason, we simply take our potential, we plug in R0, and this defines our turning point. And it also allows us to know what the energy is. So now we can just plug in the energy in our integral. So we integrate from 0 to R0. We have square root of 2m v0 uh, times the natural log of r0 over a minus v0 natural log of r over a. Now, here we can apply the property of the natural log that um, if we have the subtraction of two logs, it is the same as having the argument of one divided by the argument of the other. And we can also factor out a few things. So we can get a uh, factor out 2m v0. Then we have the integral. And now we have square root of the natural log of r0 divided by a divided by r over a, which is, of course, the same as multiplying by a over r, so times a over r. So the a's cancel out and we are left with r0 over r. So r0 over r. OK, so how do we integrate this? Well, what we can try is say, OK, let z be equal to the natural log, so everything that is inside of the square root, so r0 over r, and now we need to find dr. Now, I would personally like to first find r and then take the derivative. You could, of course, take the derivative of this and then try to find dr. You're going to get to the same result. So finding r from here, we have to exponentiate. So we get e to the z is equal to r0 over r. So r is equal to r0 times e to the minus z. So dr is equal to minus r0 e to the minus z dz. OK, so now we have everything that we need. Let's plug it in. So we have square root of 2mv0. What are the limits of our integral now? So we have to plug in, um, let's see, for z, of course, there. So our first limit, the lower limit, was r equals 0. In that case, we get the logarithm of 
infinity, right? Um, and that means that we begin at infinity. And in the other limit, we have r equals r0. So that means that right here we have, um, this would be one. So we get the natural log of one, which is zero. So we integrate from infinity to zero. Okay, uh, now everything else. So we have a square root of z and then dz, which is minus, so we can put it here in the front, r zero e to the minus z dz. Now, what do we do next? Well, notice that this may look familiar. I hope it does. Um, we have encountered things of this sort a few times. I will rewrite it like this. So what we can do to make it even more apparent is to take the r0 outside. Maybe I'll move everything just a little bit. So minus r0. Now, this integral may look familiar. And in fact, I hope that it does um, because this is almost what is called the gamma function of, uh, maybe let, let's call it t. Now the gamma function, we can write it in the integral form and it goes from zero to infinity of x to the t minus one e to the minus x dx. And if you compare these two, they look almost the same, but we have to change this one half to three halves minus one, right? That is one half. And we can use this minus sign that is outside we can use it to flip the endpoints of the integral. So instead of going from, from infinity to zero, now it goes from zero to infinity. Okay. And now they are identical, which means that this expression right there is simply, so this thing right there, this is well, all of our constants so that, that doesn't change. And then we have gamma of three halves. Okay. Um, but we know that there is an important uh, property of the gamma functions. I mean, you can look this value up if you don't know it, um, but whenever you have the gamma function of x plus one, this is the same as x times the gamma function of x. And in this case, we have the gamma function of one half plus one. So this is the same as one half times the gamma function of one half. But the gamma function of one half is the square root of pi. So that means that we get the square root of pi over two. Okay. That is a, a known result. And it is very, very helpful that you know it. Okay, so now we found the solution to the integral. That's why the gamma function is so important because you can't really solve this integral in any easy way. Um, all right, now we need to plug it back in here. So set this equal to n. So this is equal to n minus one fourth times pi h bar. And what we want to do is find the energy levels. But there is no energy here, at least not explicitly, but we have r zero. And r zero also appears in an expression for the energy. So what we can do is find r zero from the equation that we got by solving the integral, and then we plug it in here. And then we will have an expression for the energy. So from here, r0, let's see, um, maybe we can do a few simplifications. So this square root of two and this will uh, cancel out a little bit, this square root of pi and this, and I think that's it. So r0, this will give us the square root of two pi over mv0 times n minus one fourth h bar. Okay, and now we plug this into our expression for the energy, which are the energy levels. And this is V zero natural log of, it used to be R zero over R. Uh, no, it, it was R zero over A. Okay, I'm double checking. Uh, R zero over A, right? Yes, R zero over A. So we plug that in and we get V zero natural log of. And let's see, so we plug all of this in. So we get square root of two pi, m v zero, and I will write the h bar right here. Then we have n minus one fourth. Okay, and in principle, here you are already done, but it is useful to write this um, a little bit differently. So since all of these things are multiplying, we can separate this into two different logs. So we can get the logarithm of the constants. So two pi 
um, v0 h bar. And then we can write plus v0 times the natural log of this n minus 1 fourth. And now this is an expression that is, of course, completely equivalent, but it gives us the energy levels. And as you can see, now that we want to go to the next part of the problem where they ask us um, to find the space in between energy levels, this is going to make things much, much better because if we want to find the spacing between two levels, that means that we want to know En plus 1 minus En. What is this? So when we do this, we get V0. So plugging in for this, uh, the constants that don't depend on n and then we have plus v0 natural log of n but this time n is n plus 1 so we get n plus 1 minus 1 fourth but that is simply 3 over 4 so we get n plus 3 over 4 and then we get minus en but here we get this part again right and the mass is the same the potential is the same so we get exactly the same thing but with a minus sign right so this and this cancels out. And then we have minus v0 natural log of n minus 1 over 4. And now finally, we just um, improve our notation a little bit. What we can do is once again use properties of the logarithm to put everything together. So v0 natural log of n plus 3 over 4 divided by n minus 1 over 4. And this is the spacing for any two energy levels in this potential. And as you can see, uh, it was really easy to do. I mean, you can see it was very, very, very short. All we had to do was plug everything into the integral, solve it, which was very easy considering that it was the gamma function, and then just plug the result into this equation, which again is the only thing that we need to solve, and then use the uh, the turning point uh, to find the energy. And that is it. So I hope that this video was useful to you. If it was, please consider leaving a like on the video, commenting and subscribing, and I'll see you in another video. And maybe consider supporting my Patreon, by the way. And I'll see you in another video. Thank you very much for watching.